timestamps and everything will be in the video description down below. But let's start off with the proper way to take a screenshot. I don't know about you, but it's really annoying to take a screenshot. Having to hold both the volume up as well as the power button at the same time just to take a screenshot, there's an easier way. You see, using the Apple Pencil, yeah, you could slide from the left to the right side and we'll take a screenshot this way. But there's a setting that you could go in on your iPad and then scroll down into the multitask and gestures and scroll all the way to the very bottom where it says swipe finger from corner enable this as here if you take a quick look you can swap these between quick notes or screenshot now by just simply doing that this will take a screenshot right then and there instead of you having to fiddle with the buttons and if we go back you can swap both the right corner or the left corner with those two shortcuts or have it off entirely so a swipe left will allow us to pop up a little note window as you see right there but in the screenshot section i do want to highlight a couple of things because not only do we have this little sliding tool on the very bottom but right here what you can do is draw lines on certain things so as an example if i draw a box over this and long hold it will actually make it into the proper shape but forgotten one is an arrow by simply drawing a line and holding it midway this will automatically make an arrow and this also works with iphones just make a line and go back and hold it midway and it'll actually create an arrow right there on the spot you can do the exact same thing to like highlight certain things by just drawing a line underneath it and the same applies with the highlighter ruler as well i mean the highlighter i'm sorry and just like that you have created perfect shapes whenever you're showing your subject certain things now this pencil over here looks to be in my opinion is probably one of the most underestimated ones here i'll draw a little arrow right here for you for reference where by selecting this you can actually draw around certain objects and actually like move it around as you see, I just done right there. So if you need to reshape something or reposition something instead of deleting it entirely, you can always just do that. The eraser tool also has a powerful capability. It's just like that. Whenever you select the eraser tool, you may think you can just erase like this. Well, in actuality, if you select the eraser tool, you have object eraser abilities. When you select this, now if I just tap it on the object, you'll delete it all entirely. That is pretty cool. You can also adjust the opacity as well if you want it to be less transparent or more transparent to the markers you're drawing so it's more readable and over here you can select to highlight text and then of course you can select the pencil tool to go back and go back to your toolbar right here which you can actually move around to your liking and tap to expose and now you know how to use the screenshot tool to its full potential now the keyboard i'm using an ipad pro is what i have right here and these numbers on top, if you actually one of these and just move down, you can actually just write the numbers, just write that in there instead of having to switch to your number keypad menu. And then simple pinch out like this will make the window into a smaller key window, which is super convenient when tapping in portrait mode. And then just pinch and do this to make it back to full screen. Or you could tap right here to hide this keyboard. Now in iPad minis, you have the ability to split the keyboard in two to make handheld mode more convenient. Unfortunately, this is only available on iPad Airs and other iPads, except for the iPad Pro for some reason. Now, since we still are on the iPads, I want to show you the ability to lock apps. This is perfect to use if you have kids or you want to loan your iPad to somebody, but you don't want them to fiddle around your other applications. It's super easy to set this up. In settings, you just go into accessibility and then scroll down until you find guided access. Make sure you turn this on and now select the app you want them to have access to. You want to lock them in that app in particular. So I'm going to go ahead and launch Minecraft as, as an example. Let it load. And then I'm going to triple tap the power button. And then we are in this guided access. From here, you do have options on the bottom where you can actually enable like a time limit. You can also include the keyboard software if you want, as well as volume controls. And once you're satisfied, just tap the start button on top and it's going to prompt you to create a pin code. So enter a pin code and make sure you memorize it. And now you are stuck on this app. This is the app that your kids has access to or the person you're lending your iPad to and they are unable to get out of this window because the home button is not responsive control center doesn't do anything the most you could do is just lock your device and that's it and to get out of this just simply repeat the process by triple tap the power button enter the pin code and now you have the ability to resume it 
or turn it off entirely and now you have access to your all your apps like you originally did. Now, I don't know about you, but I love using Safari, but most of the time when I'm working, I like to have my iPad on the side and just listen to like a podcast. Well, very similar to like listening to a podcast, you can make it so your iPad can read out loud the website that you're on. And as soon as you find an article, tap the two A's that are on the top corner on the web browser and select listen to page. iPad Pro. And then you'll find that Siri is actually reading out loud that article. And if you look back, you could play it in at a much fast rate or go back in case you wanted to repeat something or you could pause it all here entirely. Then when it comes to multitasking, there's a lot you could do in an iPad because you all have this ability so long as you're on the latest version of iPad OS. You see these top portion right here, this is how you can enter a split screen. If you do a split view as an example, you can select an app. In our case, I'm gonna select the Note app. And then you have the capability to multitask as you could type in certain things just like this. And the cool thing is this also works with drag and drop. As you can select an app, or text even, and just highlight it, and then you could drag it onto the notes, and it just attaches like so. But let's say you want to create a new note. Notes is actually one of the few apps that supports this ability where on the top portion on the notes app, you see those dots again, and on the very bottom, you'll see the note that you're currently on, and you have the ability to open up a new note. As your note library will then open up and just select the note, and you can switch between different notes just like that. But now let's say for example, you want that note to be a much larger screen without closing the other app that you have open at the same time. There's a clever way to do this. Go back in this little menu, select new window and long hold on that note. And where it says open in new window, highlight this and you have a larger screen right here. And this also support picture in picture. So if you're watching a YouTube video, you could have basically a lot of things running at once. And then of course you can just close it all entirely by swiping from the center by holding the center bar right here to make it into a smaller screen or close it all entirely. Now when taking a screenshot, there's a way you could convert it into a PDF. You see by taking the screenshot one more time, on the very top portion you have the ability to share the screenshot as an image, but if you select full page, here not only can you actually share a full website, a massive screenshot to somebody, but if you actually go in and hit this share icon, there's this option right above here, because if you notice, it says a PDF document. And now you can actually share somebody a screenshot into a PDF by doing this method. And if this full page is a bit too much, you can always just crop it and then make it shorter so they don't receive a massive PDF file. And then tap done, and then you can share it this way and, and select options and then select PDF scan document or a PDF document, I'm sorry. Now, your iPad is a powerful tool, especially when it comes to scanning PDF physical forms and papers. See, if you launch your file app on your iPad, and then you select anywhere here in the blank area, this little window will pop up, and one of them allows you to actually scan documents. Now, a little tip right here is if you're using Cloud Sync and you like to synchronize this to your computer instead of having to airdrop it to yourself, you can always select the Cloud Drive option right here, select your desktop, and then select any blank form right here, and then select Scan Document. Let me go off camera and demonstrate. And here, just go ahead and scan that document. It's gonna do it automatically depending on the setting you select. And you can scan as many documents as possible if you want, but you can also select manual if you don't like it to automatically scan that those documents like I was recently doing. And scan, keep scan. In addition to that, you can also change the style too if you wanted a more traditional black and white. Select that right here, but if you're not sure, I recommend just leaving it in photos. Select auto, let it capture, and then select on it. As right here, you have the ability to always go back and actually select it to your personal preference. Black and white is my personal favorite for official documents. And once you're satisfied, just click done. And of course you have your flash right here, which you could turn on or off. Uh, I like to keep this off. There's no need for this and save. And these documents will be saved and uploaded to the cloud. And you should be able to access it on your Apple computer, so long as you're linked with the same Apple ID account. Now, if you have an iPad that's equipped with a USB-C, you can actually use existing webcams 
to be compatible and use in case you're doing conference calls. The reason why you want to consider doing this because let's be real, not every iPad has a nice crispy front facing camera, just like our laptops. If you have a third party webcam in hand that is USB-C, you could just plug it in directly to the USB-C port. And then of course, spotlight search, since iPads do not have a calculator, you're always able to do the math right here and it'll give you the answer right then and there. But I highly recommend downloading a calculator app if you really need a calculator. And there we have it. Those are some amazing tips and tricks and some hidden features I wish I knew since day one that the iPad can do. Some of these features, again, they also may apply on the iPhone like the arrow trick I was showing you. For more videos like this, be sure to check out this video over here as I show you some amazing hidden features and some cool tips and tricks you could do on your current Apple CarPlay to really personalize it to your own personal preference and utilize the newly added features that Apple added for iOS 17. So definitely check out that video over there in case you have it. And as always, subscribing would be awesome, but it's all up to you. I'm not going to force you, but I still appreciate you for watching. So thank you so much and I'll see you in the next one.